Well, this video is about our um, VW Up. Um, we've had this car now for around five years, and we bought it as a car to tow behind our moto. Now we've got a whole playlist of videos about towing uh, with with an A-frame. I'm going to put a link up there, there uh, to those videos, so you can have a look at that. But this is really about the car. Yeah. 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 Yes, so when we made a video all about the car, we were showing it being towed and... Yeah, that's right. We uh, thought, well, we do actually use it when it's not being towed. towed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so we thought we'd do that. And this, it was one of the, the re one of the reasons for buying it is because it was one of the cars that was listed by, they were called um, Smart Tow uh, in those days. It was one mm. of the cars listed that they could convert. I think the Toyota Igo and the... Uh, Persia 106 sort of yeah well, the ones we were looking at the other yeah. ones um, yeah. I suppose if I'm honest I think the up was a little bit more upmarket uh, than perhaps some of the other ones so we sort of went for it it had lots of good reviews yeah Not, uh, fair enough I think it is yeah I mean I remember yeah. we watched a lot of YouTube videos and yeah. about various cars yeah. didn't we decided we liked the up and it did seem to be quite popular with various car yeah. testers and, and that sort of thing uh, so we went ahead and bought it and um, I think also it was one that the particular up that we went for which was the club up wasn't it yeah had a lot of extra features and it seemed uh, you know that that's what we wanted I mean it's got alloy wheels hasn't it yeah it's got air conditioning yeah uh, it's got heated seats and mirrors, and heated seats are wonderful. My mum really likes heated seats. Well, I really like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, then they had. It's got Mister Sat now, but he's. You know, it, it, well, yeah, he's, he's a little bit grumpy, isn't <laughs> he? <laughs> but it has got a dab radio. It's got a wonderful sunroof, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 Not yeah. ideal for these sort yeah. of days. So. Yeah. So. How much did it cost us? It was, I think it was 14 grand, wasn't it? About £144 a month on a four-year PCP, which, yeah. when I look at sort of other cars now, actually seem like pretty good value. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. we had to put down a deposit. I can't think yeah. it was 3000 or... it? Oh, it was two and a half. Was it? Something yeah. like that, anyway. Uh, it, it included servicing, though. Yeah, so we didn't have to worry about that for no. three years. No, which was nice. Yeah. The wheels are getting a little bit tatty. These are like stick-on things, they're alloy wheels, but this is like a stick-on silver effect and that's sort of coming off, I think. They do look quite smart when they're new. luggage compartment's not huge excuse my cool box there we've got this false floor here so I've got quite a bit of stuff in there and that's useful obviously if you take this out altogether you've got a lot more storage area there it does come with a parcel shelf but I can't fit the parcel shelf with that in there I've got a parcel shelf in here just in case you're wondering Now, there's not a huge amount of room. I'm going to have to move this now. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Let's move the seat forward a bit. I've got my little lock in the way there. But if you get in the back and you've got the seat reasonably far forward there's a reasonable amount of uh, space in here we have had uh, two fully grown adults in here just have to move the seat forward a little bit and it's reasonably comfortable it's only two seats two seats in the back I've got my little cover for the dogs this is really where the dogs go and having having four doors 
Makes it a lot easier to get the dogs in and out. There's only one of these silly little things for giving you a bit of ventilation. In the back, no wind down windows. Again, you've got the... It is, it is metal, but it feels plasticky. I suppose it's plastic coated metal, if that makes any sense. The seats do fold down, they're bifold, so this one's a shorter one, and you get a reasonably flat floor in there. I'll just take that off. There's a bit of a slope, but it's not too bad. Start with the radio. Turn the sound down. So you've got radio it does it's a dab and FM radio all the various bands it does AM as well you press that button it's got the net that's for the navigation or you can connect a phone to it to play music through up here you've got this multimedia unit display whatever you want to call it it's got trip computer It's got this daft thing that I never use um, for how well you're driving. Uh, never use it. Also got status. It shows a little funky little dials if you want. What's the outside temperature? That one on the right, and the one in the middle is the engine temperature. You've got a navigation system, um, which is which is okay, it's a Garmin based one and uh, it seems to work okay, it's a little bit old old now, a little bit slow uh, but it does do voice commands so you can say Address POI nearby all my destinations Address What is the name of the town? Oldham What is the name of the street? High Street. High Street. What is the house number? One. Is Oldham One Vine Street correct? No. And so on. Uh, take me home, new destination. It's okay. Sat nav's okay switch the radio on. That's the car radio so you can see what's on the, the radio. Oh, wrong one. Media. Media player. And that will hook up with the phone. I'll show you that in a minute. So navigation and phone. I haven't connected my new phone to it yet. I'll do that in a minute. And you can switch it off. Over here, heated seats for both sides, driver and passenger. They've got two levels, really hot and bearable. Uh, rear heated screen, user controls, temperature, fan, and where you want it directed. That's pretty good. If you want it back into the car, that's there. It has got a CD player. I don't think I've ever, ever used it. Which is surprising, really. Moving over, you've got the buttons for adjusting the display, two of them. You can set it, and that one at the moment, all that does is it changes the uh, from the mileage to the trip mileage. You can see, I've, I don't think I've ever reset the trip mileage. Oh yes, I have, sorry. On the steering wheel, oh, not on the steering wheel, there's no controls on the steering wheel. It's just a very nice leather trimmed steering wheel. That's one of the nice things. One of these ones with a flat sort of bottom. A lot of VWs have that. Uh, you've got cruise control uh, on here, on this one. So set and resume. 
and cancel and switch it off and that's obviously the indicators and that's the light the main beam and the flash over on this side you've got the wipers I think we've got three speeds and intermittent and rear wind, windscreen washer and a button difficult to show you this button on the end for resetting the trip meter there which I hardly ever use moving down it's really hidden there's the headlight leveling uh, switch so you can adjust the levels of the headlights and in here is the headlights so side lights main beam front fog rear fog on the doors got electric mirror adjustment you can lock the car unlock it windows uh, both sides on both sides if you see what I mean on the door handle but it's quite a nice it is quite a nice interior this bit takes a bit of getting used to it's like it's a bit plasticky but I think it's quite stylish and it's different from your usual sort of uh, array of black plastic speaking of black plastic there's black plastic on the dashboard of course I've got my, my um, dash dash cam up there up here you've got the the interior lights controls uh, hardly ever use it but up here you've got the controls for the sunroof so if you press it that way it tilts the sunroof up and pull it pull it down it switches it off if you turn it round it opens the sunroof turn it all the way and it goes all the way back do without that in the winter it's quite a nice dashboard you've got the rev rev meter on the left you've got the speedo in the middle and fuel on the right what more do you need moving down here obviously gear lever the gear change is really nice you just move the mascot out of the way uh, you've got cup holder here this thing up it goes like that and you put a cup in there oh, you've got a bit of space there There's just enough space for your hand sanitizer there wouldn't say it's the biggest sort of central storage bin I've ever seen um, you've got to the, the button to set the tire pressure monitoring on the on the vehicle and it's the rotational one so uh, it measures how fast the wheels are rotating and you set it there it's got a single unit it's got a single 12 volt socket there's no USB socket on this which is why I've got this affair here which gives me a couple of USB sockets and somewhere to power the dash cam handbrake the steering wheel is adjustable uh, just up and down though it only goes up and down it doesn't go in and out bonnet releases over there A little glove box, which is not the biggest glove box you've ever seen. Uh, a little storage compartment, there's enough for a bottle of wine in there. Or a bottle of water of course. Same on that side, I tend to keep my squeegee thing and a, an umbrella in there, that's about all you can manage in there. And we've got a little stubby aerial on the top. It's quite, I quite like the design of it. I, I, I was always attracted to it. Just thought it was quite neat. Filler caps on this side. And it's quite stylish. So I'm going to test you on the specifications, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, would you call it a big car, small car? No, it's a very <laughs> small car. <laughs> small. How long is it? It's 3.51 metres long. 3.54? 3.54. 
What was it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I try not to look at that, but go on. Yeah. What, how wide is it? It's one. It's one point nine one meters wide. I think that's actually mirror to mirror. I think it's actually narrower than that inside. I might be wrong. I mean, compared with the, the van's width. Yeah. There's nothing, is it? Well, the van is nearly two and a half metres wide, so it yeah. gives you an idea how narrow it is. Yeah, so how tall is it? It's just one and a half metres tall, so it's you can actually look over the roof on it, can't you, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what about its turning circle? Well, that's one of the worst things about it. For a small car, the turning circle is, is about is nine metres, so it's actually uh, it's quite a big turning circle of a small car. I noticed that a couple of times, you know, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much does it weigh? Well, the specs say it weighs 854 kilograms, but fully loaded, it could weigh up to 1,015 kilograms. Right. What's, what size is the engine? It's just under a 1 cc, a 1 cc. <laughs> <laughs> Good little engine. Just under 1,000 cc, it's 999. What about its brake horsepower? It's got a massive 73 brake horsepower. So I remember, didn't we have a Toledo and that was about 60 or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a bit more than that. Just a bit more, but it uh, probably weighs a bit less. Yeah. <laughs> what about its torque? What is it? Pound per foot? How many torques has it got? As many torques as it got, yeah. Yeah. That's my phone. Right, where was I? You were, we were talking about uh, the talk and then, then the mark, yeah, oh, I've lost it now. Yes, we're talk, we were talking about the talk. <laughs> yeah, 70 pounds foot of talk, which is about enough to pull the skin off a rice pudding, really. Right, it's not. It's really, not massive, no. no. It, it, it actually does 0 to 60 in 12.8 seconds if you actually wanted to time it. It, it. What it does feel, it does feel quite perky, sort of lower down, which is, probably what you need for a city car. It goes surprisingly well. It picks up. It's no, it's no pocket rocket, but uh, about town and uh, in and out of towns and villages, it's fine. It keeps up with the traffic. Yeah. It, it's not, I don't think it's actually lacking in power because it is quite a light car, so. But uh, ask me about the miles per gallon then. Yeah, what, what the, about the miles per gallon? When we bought it, it was a claimed 61 miles per gallon. Do you know what it's doing now? What well, it really does. Well, it life. really does between 40 and 50, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, if I'm driving it around town on short journeys, it's 40 miles per gallon. If we go on a longest journey, I can get 50, 52 miles per gallon. But so, I suppose we don't do many longest journeys, no, do we? No, so it's not especially, yeah. um, what's the word, frugal. No. No, okay. Uh, what's its top speed? I've never been anywhere near its top speed of 106 miles an hour. No. What insurance group is it in? I oh, know you're asking, aren't you? Um, I have to read that. It's Insurance Group 6. And uh, how much did it cost us last year to insure? Bearing in mind that we still had a problem where we had uh, a no-fault accident on the motorhome when it put the premiums up, it's 247 for us to insure. I think you could probably get it cheaper than that now, or it probably will be cheaper than that now. And uh, what about the road tax? I mean, this is one of the best things about it. Yeah, when people say, why do you tow a car behind a motor? You know, you have to pay two taxes. Well, the road tax is £20. Yeah, I think I think the system's changed since we got that. Has it? Because I think every, every new car now is at least 140 Oh, is it? Right. Okay. Yeah, so but this still is brilliant at yeah. £20 a year. I mean, it's nothing. No, it's, it's, uh, it's very good. Yeah. How many miles have we done in it? Uh, last time I looked, it was just over it was about nineteen and a half thousand miles. I would suspect that about half that again is um, being towed. So um, I'll talk about the tyres and the wear on the car a little bit later. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the problems we had with it. No, yeah, well, the only one that really comes to mind is that intermittent energy 
like something to do with the engine uh, management light. Yeah, engine management light. Something to do with the oxygen sensor. Yeah, the O2 sensor. Um, it keeps coming up with a message, and you have to decode it and all this sort of thing. But it says that the O2 sensor is faulty. Now they actually changed the O2 sensor, didn't they? Well, yeah, the two weren't they? On the two sensors or something. One at the front and one at the back of yeah. the um, catalytic converter, I think it is. Yeah. And uh, so they changed the front one. Then it came up again, and then they reset it. And a few months later, it came up again. It only seems to happen when it's when it's wet. I think when it's wet and cold. Mm. So I think it's something to do with the moisture in the air. And uh, last time it came up, I just asked them to just reset it and not had a problem since. So No, that was July, wasn't it? And yeah. it's not it's not I, come back. I actually thought about buying one of these things that you could just plug in and reset the error codes. It was it's a minor thing, so Well you did buy something, didn't you? But it I've didn't got the work. wrong one. Yeah, so if anyone wants a, a <laughs> um, engine management tool thing for um is it VW Passat I think it was. Yeah, VW it just, up. Just yeah. doesn't didn't work. Did didn't it? work, no. But so uh, I mean the first time well, we've taken it to the garage a couple of times. You called the AA out twice. Yeah, didn't you? yeah, that's right. And, and they, that's why they told us the same thing. It was yeah. that sensor again. Yeah, they? and uh, so we're not going to worry about that. The only on the on the the only other problem I had was with the drive shaft gates. It's like a plastic sleeve over one of the drive shafts, and that for some reason sort of fell apart. And the drive shaft itself has gone a little bit rusty. So I've got a bit of pure rust out and uh, put that on there. So. It's not broken yet. No, no. So I think that's the only problems we had. Um, talking about the tyres, we had a, a slashed tyre run over a bit. Of, I think it was an indicator so about it a was, month after we bought it, didn't we? Yeah, we were going. We were at Birds Country Park, weren't we? And we were going to the station to go on the Flying Scotsman. Yeah. And uh, just <laughs> about to go along the road there, um, the tyre went yeah. flat, but yeah. it's got a spare. One of those, what do you call those tires? Space saver tires. Yeah, yeah. one of those. Yeah, so we so used that for a bit. And put uh, that on and then... But so I've actually had, by now, after all these miles that I've done, the 19,000 plus or over many miles, I've no idea how many miles I've towed it, uh, all the tires have been changed since now. Not done the brakes, was surprising, surprisingly enough, they've not needed doing so. No, no. Got another MOT July, July isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that will be its sixth... Uh, it's, Hang on, third MOT. Third it? MOT, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, talk to me about driving it. You haven't driven it, obviously. No, no. So, what's it like to drive? Uh, it's a very easy car to drive. Um, and when I think when I first got in it, I just sort of sat there and just at the steering wheel and the seat and everything. Oh, this is all right. It's one of those cars mm. that you find very easy to adapt to. Uh, it just seems everything's fairly well laid out in the logical position. And uh, I just love driving it. It's only a 1000cc, so you can't expect too much from it. I think it's 75 PS, I think it is. One of the nicest things about driving it is the little gear change. The gear change is very sweet. Quite a short throw. Five, it's only five speed, not six speed. I you think if you had, if you're in six gear and doing any sort of speed, I think you'd struggle, struggle to keep it in sixth. But yeah, only five speed, and it will amble along, which quite always surprises me. It will amble along at thirty in fifth. But I mean, parking it is is a is a joy in the town. It's, I mean, because it's so short, it's, no, it's never a problem finding a parking space. It's taken us some weird, wonderful places, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's been great. I particularly remember in Wales yeah. when we stayed at Shaw's Mead and we did that little tour that the wardens had suggested. Yeah. All down to those little uh, coves and tiny things. little Welsh lanes. I think we'll put a bit of footage in here. It says these are pretty country lanes. Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, I'm glad we're not in the van. Doesn't it just about fit the car down here? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
campsite down here. Good grief. Oh, God. God. Good grief. Being up hard knock pass. I don't think we filmed that. No, that was that was before we were filming anything. I mean, we took the XR2 up hard knock pass oh, right. maybe years ago, yeah. and then so we thought, well, we'll take this one up there. We were doing okay, weren't we? Apart from there was someone in front slowed right down. Yeah, slowed right down because it's not got a huge amount of power, so you end up sort of slipping the clutch. You know, smell of burning clutch, I think. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> with the worrying smell but it, but it did it, get us up there it got us up yeah, there yeah, yeah yeah so it's actually perfect for narrow lanes and i suppose for city centers not that we do many city centers no but... it's only into glasgow isn't we? that's all yeah yeah but little, little towns i mean ludlow was one in question wasn't it the last time yeah last i wouldn't have wanted we to take on. the motor home there in 160 yards you will reach your designated road the lounge come down here it's just a thought <laughs> Yeah. No, the car park was right at the back of the market, yeah. and uh, I think if we hadn't had the car with us, we we would have had to have gone on the bus. Yeah, yeah. But the car's great because it, we don't have to worry whether Poppy can go on a bus or no, you know, yeah, so she just you... sits in the back. Yeah, yeah. So cue a shot of Poppy sitting in the back. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and the other thing I always get. I asked uh, when you mention you tow a car behind the motor, I mean, you can't take it to Spain. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about the first comment that ever comes up if you talk about it. Yeah. We've never needed or wanted to take it abroad with us. And when we have been abroad, France and uh, Belgium and Luxembourg and Germany and all those places, um, there's always been somewhere to stop, unlike this country, where mm. sometimes parking can be really, really tricky. Mm. Yeah. and uh, you know felt the need for a car in those places um yeah i mean normally when we've been abroad also we've been doing a tour we've been two nights somewhere two nights somewhere else and it's like a tour we do here yeah if we do that in scotland we don't take the car because we're no. moving on so, yeah, somewhere so else if we're moving on we uh, we you know two three days yeah we, we, we don't no need. there's no need it it uh, and i think posh cats camping said this didn't they they said Mm. Taking the car with you turns your motorhome into a caravan. Yeah. So yeah. you can go caravanning with your motor, and I think that's that's probably the reason uh, for the towing bit. I said yeah. I wasn't at all about that, didn't I? You did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lovely little car. I really enjoyed it. And uh, are we going to change it? Might do next year, mightn't we? Any any th any things on the horizon that you might be considering? We can't have another. They only do the up in electric, uh, electric car yeah, now, don't Yeah, they? that's right. They only do an electric up now. The problem, <laughs> you can't flat tow, you can't A-frame an electric car because, the, as I understand it, the wheels are connected to the 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 um, the motors. And if you were turning the wheels, you'd be generating uh, electricity effectively. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just that it doesn't, it doesn't happen. So we can't go... Uh, if we were going to tow a car, the only way we could tow an electric car would be on a trailer. Uh, what puts me off that is electric cars are heavier anyway. I think the electric E-Up, as it's called, weighs 1,200 kilograms to start with. Mm -hmm. So you add 300 kilograms to a trailer, you've got you know a, a thing that that's now weighing 1,500 kilograms rather than something that that weighed at, at, at most 850 kilograms. Yeah, yeah. So it would be a big difference going up hills. I mean, the electric car would be great as a run around at home, wouldn't it? Yeah, where we only yeah. do short journeys. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. but um, it, we can't take it with us. No. We would have to decide either we didn't take it with us or... Yeah, and yeah. maybe it will coincide if we ever do, when we get around to changing the motor, maybe it will uh, coincide with getting a smaller motor, I don't know. Yeah. Possibly. But we're not keen on doing that at the moment. No, no, I just like the setup we've we've got at the moment. Yeah, I think if if anything, something like the Nissan Micro or something like that. Yeah, well, we did uh, test drive one, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, that was a nice little car. Yeah. 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 So I think that's it for the the uh, little uh, car video. Yeah, it's but, a sweet little car. I do, do like it. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of room for the dogs, isn't there, in the back? And, yeah. Yeah. So that's it for this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I note that most of our the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So if the 60% who watch the videos are not subscribed did subscribe, we'd have half as much again subscribers. So it could be lovely. Be on 32,000 subscribers. <laughs> we could probably retire on that then. Yeah. <laughs> it's a major achievement. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, like I say, we'll 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 see you soon. Yeah. Bye then. Yeah. Bye then.